So some of you may have noticed that I haven't uploaded a video in a while. And truth be told, that's because I've kind of been feeling a little burnt out lately. I haven't really had the energy or motivation to make videos like I used to. Upon retrospective, I found that that may potentially be because I've been working on a lot of these really long videos. It's not uncommon for my videos to be 15 minutes to a half hour or even longer. Making videos that long takes a lot of intensive research, time-consuming recording, and tedious editing. And of course, that can cause me to get burnt out pretty quickly. Now, the longer videos will still be there. I still plan on making some of the longer videos that I used to, but I'm going to throw some shorter videos into the mix, just so that I can start releasing content on a more regular schedule. All that being said, today's video is going to be a short one, and it comes from a channel called Support Our Cops. Hmm, I wonder if this guy's going to end up being a bootlicker. I was at an appearance uh, the other day for the Wounded Warrior Project, and I got my picture took with a couple of police officers. I was a little surprised that uh, there was a few people on my, in the comments section that was like, Fuck the police. The police ain't shit. Well, I mean, they really aren't. Cops want you to believe that they're these bold and brave heroes who every day put their life on the line, who heroically rush into bad situations to protect the innocent, just like you see on TV and movies. And while the impression you may get of police work from Hollywood might very well be that of heroism and valor, the reality of what cops do is a lot different from what you see on television. In real life, police work is actually pretty boring. Instead of rushing into a situation to fight bad guys, most of the time they're usually just sitting in their car, filling out paperwork, driving around town, pulling people over, harassing people because of weed or whatever. And most of the situations they get called out to aren't major crimes like bank robberies. Most of it is dumb little shit like the neighbors playing their music too loud, someone's dog shat in my yard. Now, what's interesting to point out is that in the rare circumstance that police do have to actually go out and deal with a dangerous situation, they're usually not heroically rushing in to save the day like you see on TV. It's actually usually the opposite. They take their sweet time to get there and deal with it. Look at any video from a news report of a mass shooting and pay attention to what the cops are doing. They're usually standing there, hiding behind their squad cars, scratching their ass, twiddling their their thumbs, taking their sweet time to go and do something, all the while bodies are hitting the floor. Heck, these people regularly shoot dogs because they're too scared of them. And we're not talking like a big ferocious pit bull or rottweiler here. Like, you could have a little chihuahua or labradoodle or something like that and they'll shoot it, claiming that they fear for their safety. Yeah, hardly the courageous and heroic people they make themselves out to be. Oh, police officers can suck my dick. So I think that an important distinction needs to be made here. And it's a distinction that I like to emphasize any time I make a video criticizing law enforcement. There is a difference between criticizing individual officers personally and criticizing the institution of policing as a whole. Do I think every single police officer is personally a bad person? Of course not. I'm sure there are plenty of cops out there who do great things for their communities. But there are problems fundamental to the way that police is done in our society. Police departments are funded through coercive taxation, meaning that they have no market incentive to provide a quality service. Police officers answer to the government and not to the citizens that they serve, which means they're often expected to enforce victimless crime laws. Thus, they end up infringing on the freedom of the very community they're sworn to protect. Things like qualified immunity shield police officers from liability, and as a result, there's very little disincentive for police officers to abuse their authority. All of these problems and more are foundational to the institution of policing, and they will continue to exist if they're not addressed, regardless of what good intentions any individual officer might have. <laughs> what the fuck, really? Why so anti-police? Gee, I don't know. Why on earth would someone be against a paramilitary organization with special rights to harass and detain people that has to be funded through coercion because nobody would voluntarily pay to have their house raided over a gram of weed? There's so many better things that you could be against. Let's see, you could be anti-pedophile? But what if the cop happens to be a pedophile? I mean, there have been instances of police strip-searching and photographing girls as young as four. It's actually not that uncommon for pedophiles to try and take on a role of authority in order to gain the trust and obedience of young children. So a cop being a pedophile is very much within the realm of possibility. 
anti-guy that breaks into houses and shit? By far, the biggest invader of houses in the U.S. is the police. You are far more likely to have your home invaded by the police than some random criminal off the streets. It's not unheard of for police officers to straight up swarm into people's homes without a search warrant or even any sort of probable cause that a crime has been committed, and basically do whatever the fuck they want. They can damage your property, steal your property, shoot your pets, even straight up just kill someone. And as long as they have the smallest pretense to justify it, they'll basically get away with it. Look up a guy named Andrew Finch. He's an innocent man who was killed when a SWAT team invaded his house. They didn't have a warrant, they didn't have any sort of probable cause that a crime was happening at his house. The only thing they had was an anonymous tip that ended up being fraudulent. And to add insult to injury, they didn't even get the right house. At least when the common street criminal invades your house, they're not protected by qualified immunity. Anti-peelhead, breaking into your car and stealing all your fucking change. Well, if a cop were to pull me over and happen to decide that he could smell weed in my car, he would be able to legally break into my car, steal all my change, and basically keep it because of something called civil asset forfeiture. Anti-Luke Bryan. <laughs> but you want to be anti-police. Red herring. So this is basically a red herring fallacy he's doing right here. Oh, so you're against the police? Well, what about this other completely tangential list of other bad things you should be against, huh? Aren't you against those things? Like, um, yeah, I, I am against those things, I suppose, but I don't see what bearing that has on the issue at hand. Like, is being against those things mutually exclusive with being against the police? Is it not possible to be against the police and those things you listed? Especially when you consider that there's overlap with pedophiles and people who break into houses? Yeah, it kind of makes sense why people wouldn't just go down a list and discuss every single thing that they're against when the issue specifically at hand is the police. For example, I'm going to assume that this guy is against serial killers. He never mentions serial killers anywhere in the video, it's not really the main topic of the video, but I'll go out on a limb and probably assume that that's something that he is in fact against, even though he doesn't explicitly list it off. And people keep posting these videos of people getting body slammed and getting hemmed up. Oh, people get a lot more than just body slammed. People get shot, tased, beaten within an inch of their life. And videos like this are a dime a dozen. They come out all the time. Because cops have a lot of power-happy jackasses among their ranks. And they're like, oh my god, police brutality. Oh my god, why is this happening? Bitch. <laughs> That's not police brutality, that's resisting arrest. It seems like all cops have to do to justify killing or beating the tar out of someone is to claim that the person was resisting arrest. Like, oh, well they were resisting arrest. So of course now we get to do whatever the fuck we want to them, duh. Since when was resisting arrest a capital crime? Aren't police officers trained to, you know, de-escalate situations? And use violence as a final as opposed to immediate resort? Now, I've never been to the police academy myself. The closest experience I have to police work is from playing L.A. Noir, but I'm pretty sure that de-escalation is an important part of the police training, no? I'm pretty sure, because you pushed the officer and you told him no, like, a hundred fucking times. So if someone's being arrested for a victimless crime, I really don't give a shit if they resist. As a matter of fact, I encourage it. If you haven't done anything to hurt anyone else or violate anybody's rights, you absolutely have the right to defend yourself from someone trying to kidnap you into a cage, even if they have a badge. Maybe cops would think twice before raiding someone's house for drugs if there was a risk they would get shot in self-defense. You know what's funny? I'm an ex-con. I've been arrested literally like millions of fucking times. So there are two possibilities here. Either this guy used to live a life of actual crime, and being arrested so many times has helped him get his life back on track, in which case maybe he does have something to be thankful to the police for. Or, each of those times he was arrested, it was for some dumb little victimless crime, in which case this is the saddest example of Stockholm Syndrome I've ever seen. I've never been shot. I've never been tased. I've never been maced. I've never even been tackled and thrown to the ground. Well, glad to know that your specific antidotal experience with the police is somehow comparable to everyone else's. You know, you being a white person living in what appears to be a fairly affluent neighborhood, I have no doubt that maybe you can get arrested dozens of times and never face any violence from the police. However, I have a feeling that people in different situations might not be so lucky. When a cop says stop, I stop. If a cop says let me see your hands, guess what? I show my hands. If a cop says put your leg in, put your leg out, put your leg in, and shake it all about, well, I'll be doing the hokey pokey then, won't I? Now, in German! <laughs> <laughs>
So you do realize that police don't have broad authority to just order people around. Police can only give orders that they lawfully have the right to give, and it has to serve some legitimate investigatory purpose. A cop can't just go up to a random person on the street and demand that they make them a sandwich or give them a blowjob. It's not that I'm an ass kisser, it's just that I have a plethora of common sense. You are absolutely 100% an ass kisser. I have no doubt in my mind that if a cop took a shit and told you to lick his asshole clean, you would do it without hesitation. For all the crimes that I committed, I didn't blame the police. I didn't blame the judge. I'll probably make a separate video tackling this issue, but judges are probably just as bad as, if not worse, than cops. They're some of the biggest high horse egotistical god complex jackasses there are. They also have the power to hold people in contempt, which is basically carte blanche to throw people in jail for whatever reason they want. It was my fault. I held myself accountable. See, nowadays, somebody will get busted breaking in a garage and get caught with a gram in their pocket. And it wouldn't surprise me at all if they got in more trouble for the gram in their pocket than they did breaking into the garage. This is why prosecutors love the war on drugs. It makes it easy for them to tag on extra bogus charges to get people in more trouble than they should be. So breaking into a garage, something that might ordinarily be a couple months probation and a fine, can now cost someone multiple decades of their life. They fucking get hemmed up and they get arrested. Then all their friends are on Facebook like, Free my boy! Dip Dizzy Whizzle! Free Dizzy Dizzy Whizzle! Uh, yeah, way to go with the racism there, buddy. Choosing a stereotypically African-American sounding name to describe a criminal breaking into your garage. It's kind of funny because when you look at statistics for who's more likely to be victimized by the war on drugs, it's not white people they're going after. Free, what the fuck? Are you fucking serious? Free them? They're not Nelson Mandela, motherfucker. They're not a political prisoner seeking asylum in a foreign state. Every single person in jail for a victimless crime or anything drug related is 100% a political prisoner and should be immediately pardoned. Free them? They stole my rims and a goddamn chainsaw. If somebody does something that harms a victim, like breaking into someone else's property and stealing stuff, then yes, 100% they should be held responsible for that. What's primarily at issue here is victimless crimes. People being arrested, jailed, often having their lives ruined for things that don't actually hurt anyone else. And even in this case of having the rims and chainsaw stolen from the garage, is locking them up in jail really necessary? What about a court order forcing them to return the stolen property along with a payment of restitution or something like that? I feel like the American justice system has way too much of an emphasis on incarceration. Even minor non-violent offenses can land people in jail for multiple years. And the problem with this is that locking people up in jail doesn't really fix anything. Being locked up in jail jail for a long time can cause great psychological damage to people, as well as impact their ability to socialize normal society and get a job once released. It would seem like, if anything, prisons are just breeding grounds that create more crime. A lot of jurisdictions have actually experimented with alternative forms of sentencing, like community service or various rehabilitation programs. These alternatives would still hold criminals responsible for their wrongdoing, but without the massive disadvantages that come from prison. <laughs> Y'all are what's wrong with America. Believe me, it's not the police officers. No, what's wrong with America is ass kissers like you, who uncritically bend over backwards for authority. People who think like you are exactly the reason we have all the suffering and poverty caused by things like the war on drugs. This video was recorded before the COVID-19 pandemic, but I feel like a lot of the stuff we've been going through over the past two years, whether it's lockdowns, mask mandates, vaccine mandates, helps put this issue in perspective. Conservatives like to complain about all the COVID-19 mandates and restrictions have been put in place, but little do they realize that the exact thin blue line logic they've been peddling, all that rhetoric about how we have to respect authority and law and order and this and that, is exactly what enables Dr. Fauci to do what he did. Take all the rhetoric that the left has been using to justify COVID mandates, and compare it against a lot of the arguments that the right uses in favor of the police. You'll find that they're strikingly similar. I got out of prison in 2001. Decided to keep my nose clean, change my life. Never got in trouble again. Never had a problem with a cop. Never even had two words with one. Believe me, when you decide to quit breaking the law, 
They'll leave you the fuck alone. So this is something that we hear from police apologists all the time. Well, if you just follow the law, they'll leave you alone, silly. And, well, yes, in an ideal world, the only people who would need to fear the police are people who sought to inflict harm onto others. The reality of it, though, is that our legal system is so unbelievably convoluted that it would be completely unreasonable to expect the average citizen to know all of the laws that apply to them, let alone comply with them. Pages and pages of laws are passed on the federal level alone every day. So saying, hey, just follow the law and they'll leave you alone isn't particularly helpful when there's way too many laws for the average person to know and understand. But even if I was somehow able to memorize the thousands and thousands of laws that I'm supposed to obey, that still wouldn't really do me any good because the police can still harass and detain you even if you haven't done anything illegal. <laughs> Fuck the police. What a basic bitch statement to make. <laughs> You're not NWA, bitch, for real. You're G-A-Y. And of course we gotta end the video with some homophobia, keeping it classy, am I right? Bro, you've done way more dick sucking in this video than any gay person I ever know. Until next time, this has been Philosopossum, making stupidity play dead. Everyone take care.